Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're taking a look at 10 shameless Nintendo knockoff games. With a company as successful as Nintendo, there are bound to be a buffet of games trying to ride their coattails. Now, this isn't to say that all of these games are outright awful, it's just that some of these, you know, they're pretty solid, but they coast a little too close to the games that, you know, inspired them. Have you played any of these titles? Let us know in the comments below. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Great Gianna Sisters, Super Mario Bros. This is perhaps the most famous example of games copying Nintendo. Upon starting the Great Gianna Sisters, players will immediately recognize that the first level's layout is basically Mario's World 1-1. Just about every block and power-up is lifted from Nintendo's hit game, and even the house Mario built took notice. It is said that Nintendo influenced the developers to remove their own game from sale, claiming grounds for copyright infringement. Despite a tumultuous foray into the games industry, the IP would return in the late 2000s and 2010s, only to see minimal success. Dream Runners was the last game from the Gianna Sisters franchise, and was critically panned for its poor controls and awful design choices. Oceanhorn 2, Knights of the Lost Realm, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Before 2019, Oceanhorn was one of many indie IPs to have been influenced by The Legend of Zelda, and it paid tribute to the franchise rather well, providing a solid experience. Its sequel, however, is too close for comfort. One look at the aesthetic and character design shows Oceanhorn 2 is perhaps too inspired by Breath of the Wild. That isn't to say the game isn't worth checking out, not even close. If you want to explore Zelda-like games, this might be worth your time. I mean, hey, even Ricky gave his stamp of approval for this. Just don't be surprised if the visual identity comes off a little uncanny at times. Pac-Man Fever, Mario Party Series. Originally, we were going to throw Sonic Shuffle on here as the Mario Party clone, but the confusing card system has us wondering if the game even understood why Mario Party was so good. No, our pellet munching pal is arguably the bigger offender. Pac-Man and a small cast of other Namco characters attempted to cash in on Mario Party's success with as little effort as possible. Players just need to be the first one to reach the end of the level, and that's pretty much it, standard board game fare. What hampers it from becoming a solid game is the lean content. Three boards? That's it? And you're telling me you could only throw in six playable characters out of Namco's massive catalog of IPs? To this day, Pac-Man Fever is the lowest rated console game in the franchise, and below that is the DS port of Pac-Man World 3 and the 3DS port of Pac-Man Party, which ripped off Mario Party and Monopoly. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Smash Up. Super Smash Bros. series. Of every Nintendo IP, no franchise has seen as many copycats as the Super Smash Bros. series. Few have managed to be decent at best while practically ripping on the format and controls. This TMNT spin-off, however, managed to be just a little more unique. Aside from just being a different IP, Smash Up gives its cast their own movesets and offers up distinguishable layouts for its stages. There's a bit more focus on stage hazards and traversal, and it may not offer too much replay value, but for what it is, it's pretty good. Huh? Huh? 
Atari Karts, Mario Kart series. Could you tell the disdain in my voice? Now, one could argue that every kart racer is a ripoff of Mario Kart, but many have put their own spin on the racing subgenre since the franchise debuted. No, of the ones that tried riding Mario Kart's coattails, Atari Karts was one of the earliest knockoffs next to Sonic Drift. Thing is that Sonic Drift had a cast of characters capable of rivaling Mario's. Atari? Yes, players will certainly remember characters, you know, like Pulpito, Bentley Bear, Miracle Man, yeah, totally! Even if they were to include their more recognizable properties like Pong or Centipede, would people ever choose an Atari kart racer over one starring Sonic or Mario? The answer is no. Long Vinter, Animal Crossing series. Your eyes do not deceive you, dear viewer. This is very much a game treading a little too close to Animal Crossing's aesthetic. However, this might interest those of you looking for a new survival game to jump into, perhaps one focused more on PvP. Long Vinter brings similar features to Animal Crossing, letting players decorate and improve their homes, fish, gather materials, interact with players, and such. To appeal to survival game fans, it also features the ability to cooperate or compete against other players to survive in the world. There are even PvE servers for those not wanting direct competition against other players. So, hey, might be worth checking out. Science Papa, Cooking Mama. Okay, we know that Cooking Mama is not a Nintendo property, but the franchise saw massive success in its early years on Nintendo DS and Wii. So, in our eyes, we're kind of counting it. Whereas Cooking Mama was more or less marketed to young girls, one studio decided to try and appeal to boys with their own minigame-based game. This studio was Activision, and their game was Science Papa. From the art style to the mechanics and even the title itself, everything about this game was screaming, I wanna be Cooking Mama. As one might expect, Science Papa never took off and it ended up as one of many shovelware games that would end up in the bargain bins. And I can tell you, this game is horrible. I played this, I actually streamed it one time. And I'm like, man, this is such a Cooking Mama clone, it's almost embarrassing. Golden Axe Warrior, The Legend of Zelda series. Today, many games inspired by Zelda are treated with respect in how it honors the legacy and style of Nintendo's dungeon crawling adventure series. Again, just look at Oceanhorn. Solid game. However, in 1991, more studios were focused on replicating formulas in attempts to gain their own effortless success. Sega was one of those companies and shoveled out Golden Axe Warrior. And we aren't just calling it a knockoff because of the similar gameplay. Many parts of the game, particularly the enemy and level design, look like direct lifts from The Legend of Zelda. What's worse is that it somehow soils what made the original Zelda so good. You copy the game and it somehow plays worse. How does that work? Cartoon Network Punch Time Explosion, Super Smash Bros. series. Steering back one more time over to the Smash clones, the biggest offender in directly lifting ideas in design is Cartoon Network Punch Time Explosion. Again, I'm speaking from experience here, I owned both the 3DS and the console version. Both sucked. Just about every character on the roster is some iteration of a Smash character. 
you know, Dexter is Pikachu, Mac and Blue are Ice Climbers, a lot of it is just directly lifted from Smash. As for the single player campaign, much of the gameplay and plot was similar to that of the Subspace Emissary campaign from Brawl. A platform fighter of Cartoon Network characters could absolutely work, but with so many ideas pulled directly from Nintendo, it loses its identity quickly. Even though the XL version would introduce a couple of new fighters and mechanics, it wasn't enough to prevent developer Papaya Studio from shutting down. Ouch, man. Major ouch. Monkey Business! Donkey Kong! Yeah, there were Nintendo ripoffs before the great Gianna sisters came rolling around. Nintendo's very first video game success, Donkey Kong, had its own copycat to worry about. This is Monkey Business, a game that is basically a worse version of the arcade classic, featuring basic animations, annoying beeps for sound effects, and absolutely no personality whatsoever. The entire game is just one massive copy-paste of Donkey Kong, while putting in the least amount of effort to make it remotely engaging. Even by 1985 standards, this was just unacceptable, but, you know, what else do you expect from an Amiga game? An Amiga game! Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, there's more where that came from.